Hey everybody, how's it going? Welcome to the Toman YouTube channel. My name is Chris and this great gentleman here is David McLaren. Thank you very much. Appreciate you watching and uh, we hope you enjoy your visit here to GNL. We're going to take a look right here. We have detail sanding on the body. It looks very much like it did 60 years ago. And he's been doing it for a long time himself. So you're pretty much doing a lot of hand, uh, handcraft, hand uh, made right. you know, sandings. And, right, and, right, right, right. And we, we do take a long time to do it here, but then uh, out of this factory, that's what people would expect. These are some completed sanded bodies, so you're welcome to touch them, get a oh, yeah. feel for how smooth wow. they are. The nice radius edge feels very consistent. Really smooth. It's like 400 grit or even, even smoother. It's really, oh, yeah, really, yeah, yeah, yeah. really smooth. And this is Swamp Ash here. This is Okume. Okume. It's from Africa. It's kind of a like a mahogany-like, but lighter. All right. You can see the grain patterns very much like yeah. a mahogany yeah. vibe. So. Uh, this is the semi-hollow swamp ash. This, I believe, has been no, it has not been grain filled yet. Grain filling on swamp ash helps to fill it in a little bit, so you can get your finish to be flatter without yeah. putting so much material on. Yeah. Semi-hollow as this guy is. This is very nice, light, and resident, resonant. Uh, these L2000s, uh, these will be new for the show. Uh, it has an old control plate like our 1981 L2000 is. It's, we call it the CLF Research L2000. Right. I'll tell you a little later of what CLF Research is, but before this place was GNL, it was CLF Research, which stands for Clarence Leo Fender Research. All right. That'll be a history bit. We'll get to that. It'll be fun. Great. This looks like a five-string uh, JV, jazz bass. Yeah. In the, the same way Leo's always done it, you have information in the pickup pockets, yeah. sometimes yeah. neck pockets. Uh, TBW's top bind white, which this All one has. Right. Okay. So while this one doesn't have an arm contour, uh, it's going to look really cool, you know? This, yeah, this is real rough right here. Yeah, This is just uh, yeah. off of a machine. So this is um, as far as CNC job goes. Right. And from this point on, it's all hand right, sanded. off the machine. Uh, one of the guys pressed in the studs for the vibrato. But after this, everything else has to happen here. So this is just kind of a rough cut at the arm contour and the back contour. Uh, but the precise shape is done on this machine in the same way. Actually, this... This machine is the same as as was used in the 19, late 1950s. Wow. So there are these oddball machines in here that Leo Fender designed, and many of them in this factory are just simply recreations of the ones that he did at the old Fender factory because it worked then and sure. continues to work. No. We've just put the dots in here. It had a rough cut of the radius, and now Marco's dialing in the radius here. You don't see a lot of these nowadays, that builders actually build an instrument. It's more like CNC job and machinery and engineering and you know you just kind of quality check it and don't do the stuff like yourself. It needs a lot more practice probably. Yeah, and you know, I think that when we when we brought CNC machines, these two, into the factory in 2005, I think it was, our objective really was to eliminate some processes that were actually dangerous. Yeah. But once it comes off the machine, everything is done the same way that we've always done it, which is basically the same way Leo Fender always had it done in his factory. Right. So this is already a two-piece. It's already glued together. These are locating holes that we drill on it to put onto the uh, fixture inside the machine. But this is what it looks like before it goes on the machine, just a rectangular block of wood. Uh, well, the way we do this would be like the way uh, Fender would. You know, you just have two flat pieces yeah, that just yeah. go together. Uh, all of the ones that we're doing here now are uh, center matched. Okay, over here we have some block inlays. He's already been glued in, and then they went on the machine to do a rough cut of the radius. So all you right. can see these little grooves in here. Yeah. That's from the cutter passing up and down it. Oh, all right. But once this rough cut is done of the radius, that's when it comes over and you see the work like Marco was doing there. All right. All with right. the fine detail sanding. Do you actually do the bindings here? 
in the oh, fabric yeah. as well. Oh yeah, yeah. We might get to see some of that. Oh wow. Uh, this is a, another wood uh, for fingerboards that we've been using a lot lately. We've started getting uh, customers introduce this. Uh, this is called uh, Chechen, otherwise known as Brazilian rosewood, I believe is the another term. You know, the street terms yeah. that people come up with. Yeah, yeah. But it's cool and there's no side ease troubles. And okay. uh, so, like other manufacturers, we're trying to introduce cool rosewood alternatives that maybe some people might like better. Yeah. yeah. Right here, the uh, cutter is doing a little, tiny little cutter is doing a little cut of the block inlay. So we put the block in there and then we take a little bit of that material off so when he's doing the hand sanding, it moves easier. This reminds me of a dentist getting yeah. you to work on the tooth. Oh, uh, there we go, inlays. Uh, putting dots in. So this is still the uh, traditional way. We've got a little wood, wood glue in there. He's gonna press the dots in with a, one of Leo's old presses. One of the cool things that, that if I don't point out, you might not notice, is a lot of the things in this factory are actually quite old. Yeah. Things like these, uh, this press that you pull in here and those ones. These were Leo's things that if he didn't buy them in the 1970s to make this place, he already had them in his workshop in the 1960s. You know. There's quite some history going on. It's crazy, really. It is really cool. I mean, it's those stuff that, I mean, can you tell in the guitar that was made on a bench that was Leo's old bench made by Ronnie Beers? No, but is it cool? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So again, just a little bit of wood glue. You've got your dots, press them in. It's the same way it, it always has, but we don't know if other manufacturers have come up with some other way to do this stuff. We well, just know the way that it was always done with Leo. That's just that great. Yeah. This place is very much a, uh, an old Leo place. It's just got a couple of touches of new technology. Yeah. yeah. But when we apply new technology, we like to think that if, if Leo Fender were here, would he adopt that technology? Yeah. Because he wasn't, Leo was a modern guy. He wasn't into making things that you know were old school. He wanted to push things forward. And even CNC machines, uh, in his lab, there's an example of a neck that had been rough cut okay. by a CNC machine, but this was the mid 80s. So the cost of that would have been so high, he would have thought, this is probably not worth it at that yeah. time. Yeah. But just too early, fa probably. fast forward, you know, what, 20 years, and it, suddenly it's like, okay, if he were still with us, and there were things like these oh, Haas machines oh, yeah. here, he might have adopted and go, you know what, it makes a lot of sense. Of course, because of he didn't want people to be getting losing pieces of fingers, but that was just, it was how it was done in how the middle of the 20th century. Right. So do you use different uh, radius on next, or you have like a, a standard radius? The standard that we use now is 9.5, but we also have 7.5 and 12. So then you just change the head? That yes. presses down because exactly. of the curving? Yeah. Exactly, yes. And we also roll the fret wire so it has pretty close to the radius it's going to have. So it doesn't want to pop out. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, ideally you want the radius on your wire to be slightly smaller, slightly tighter. Yeah, yeah. more round. Yeah, because the last thing you want is when you press it in that the ends want to come up. Yeah. So over in the second bay, that's what we're doing, a, it's called undercoat. So when you've got the, uh, the wood, the first thing we're going to do, we're going to put a layer down on it. That's going to dry. It'll get sanded down so it's nice and smooth. And then we spray color coat right. and then there's a clear coat. So we want to have it very flat between each stage. That's how yeah. our finishes look so flat, like deep, like still water. Yeah. Yeah. That's a very nice combination if you stain um, everything that, where, where you see the grain of the wood mm -hmm. and then you do the burst on it. That's like yeah. very, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. very three dimensional. Yeah, th this is, black burst has been a popular thing for us. Uh, and it's not like something we promoted, we just did some, they started hitting our Facebook thing, and then next thing you know. Let's build some more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay, this is our new model called the Doheny, and uh, it's clearly based on a, a Jazzmaster. Uh, we named it out Doheny because uh, the Doheny State Beach in California is kind of where a lot of our California surf culture started. And then the uh, Jazzmaster guitar, you know, it was rejected by jazz players, but it started to get its it's following up with uh, surf culture. So we just thought, well, that's kind of a nice nod to where its roots as a successful instrument came from. But our model has uh, Jazzmaster shaped pickups, but we applied Leo Fender's magnetic field design that's right. common in many GNL 
pickup. So we, we, we tried to imagine if Leo Fender made a magnetic field design technology version of a Jazzmaster pickup, or what would that be? All right. So, but it's still a, a pretty flat and wide wound exactly. single coil. It is. Okay. It was just a matter of trying to get the, uh, the architecture right and getting the wire and the winds right. That's, what, that's our old school tobacco sunburst finish. And the reason why it became old school is this is a very light one. It, this is what we used to do in the 1980s here. And then we moved to tobacco sunburst to, to very dark brown edge. And the sales department asked, hey, can you do one of those uh, tobacco sunbursts like the old school ones here? And it got written on a body, old school tobacco sunburst. And then there you go. it's like one of those factory terms that makes it out in the world. And people wonder, why do you call it old school, Will? Because well, it's our 80s yes, it is. g and yeah. tobacco sunburst. This is the detail work on the frets and then the uh, Pleck machine from Deutschland. All of, our, uh, all of our instruments that are made in Fullerton get the Pleck treatment there. So it's, uh, it is not a time-saving device. So anybody thinks that it, it's time to know it, it's a time-taking device. I'm sorry, Pleck guys, but <laughs> it's the truth. These are what we call bobbins, or sometimes they're called forms. It's basically the two pieces of fiber with the, uh, the poles pressed together. They get dipped in lacquer and hung on these things. You can see this pretty old. <laughs> it's seen a lot of pickups. Wow. With the pickup construction, if you see what's going on here, we're just using a little fixture that holds the fibers together. This is what you see as how pickups were assembled in Leo Fender's time. We just do the same thing. Again, I don't know if somebody's invented better ways. We just do it the way we learned. And this one's uh, using the same kind of uh, fixture and uh, she's pressing what this looks like a five string jazz, five string JV pickup. And you see now she's pressing in the Alnico slug. Those are Doheny pickups so you can see the construction it looks very much like uh, you know, the, the fiber shape, size, the distance between the fibers. It looks like a Jazzmaster because yeah. we started with that and then wanted to apply Leo's magnetic field design technology and then just figure out, okay, what do we have to do with the, the gauge of wire and the yeah. turns to find out. Find out balance yeah. and tone and volume and everything. Yeah. That was a fun process because we got to imagine we were Leo. Yeah. You yes. know? Was it the first time you made this kind of single coil? Right. Wow. Yeah, if you look at like our ASAC classic model, right, yeah. that has magnetic field design versions of Telecaster pickups, or yeah. S500 has magnetic field design version of oh, strap pickups. Yeah. That was, Leo didn't do that here, so we got to, we got to try to imagine we're sitting in his chair and oh, doing it. Wow. It's quite some moment. So where we had the idea first, hey, why don't we, this sounds cool, but I remember being at the time thinking, uh, if the pickups don't sound great, kill it. We're not yeah. going to do it because we can. We have to do it because we are really bringing something different where the people are going to enjoy. Yeah. It's not a, yeah. not a me too, as we say in America, yeah. a me too product. A me too. Then of course it gets wax dip, it has the nickel cover, you know, that, that cool stuff. This is a mix of paraffin wax and natural bees wax. There is a, a beekeeper in another building next door. <laughs> no way. And so he get, you know, he makes the honey, uh, you know, for the very natural stuff that's popular now. And it, so we get his beeswax from him fresh to put in our oh. our uh, our wax pot. And the funny thing is sometimes when that comes in, he does his work and bees, you know, they, they get out, right? Yeah, yeah. So sometimes we, we put the wax in, the fresh beeswax, and some of the bees will come from there and they come in here, they, they get visitors. It smells like, yeah. smells like home. <laughs> so we probably have the freshest wax in the industry. 